watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're welcome once again into God's, home, God's awesome presence. And today we are still looking uh, at the theme for the year, the truth. And, and the topic, the subtopic today is um, the container outlasts the content. The container outlasts the content. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to go to God in prayer as we prepare our hearts to find out by the teaching of the Holy Spirit how the container outlasts the content and what the container is and the content. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your awesome presence. We thank you for allowing us by the blood of Jesus to come in a fellowship with you. We pray that by the power of your spirit that you teach us today, grant each of us a teachable heart and let this word be interpreted to us in the very language that we understand. Oh God, as individuals and as the physical church, Father, we pray that, Lord, that your spirit will guide us through this study, through this teaching today, that we might imbibe your word and the word will be meaningful in our lives. Thank you, Shinto, to us because nothing will interfere. We lay aside everything that will pose a hindrance or a distraction. We ask you to have your way expressly in this place, Spirit of the Living God. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so today, like we said, we are going to be looking at the topic uh, you know, under the main theme, the truth. We are going to be looking at a topic that says, the container outlasts the content. And one will be wondering, what about container? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I need us to go uh, to our text quickly. Our text is Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew 24, 35. You know, as we go into that passage, there is something, some truth we need to establish today. And that truth is that eternity is real. Hallelujah. There is eternity. And that there are two sides to it. There is eternity as it pertains to life. There is eternity as it pertains to condemnation. That's what the Bible says, eternal condemnation, eternal life. Today, as we look at the content and the container, or the container and the content, we will see what we, you know, what God wants us to see concerning eternity. We will see that, that which takes us into eternity and what part of eternity we are going to. Is it the eternal condemnation or eternal life? What takes us to eternity, to eternal life? Is it the container or the content? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So our passage says, Matthew 24, 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And we'll be wondering, so what is the content and the content about the word of God and heaven and earth? We'll establish it in a moment. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. I want us to establish the word and the container and all that. It said, and the word become flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Jesus is the word. 
that has become flesh. And he did dwell among us to give us examples of how to live and how to prepare to get into eternal life, to get into eternity. Praise the Lord. He has brought us eternal life. That is why the portion we started with says, this is a, the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is found in no other person. This life, the truth of the matter is that, yes, there's eternal life and there's eternal combination. And this eternal life is found in no other person but the person of Jesus. And when we get acquainted with Jesus, when we make friends with him, we now discover other things. That's what the Bible says, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I want us to go there together. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. You know, talking about content now. Hallelujah. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, this content, this content, all these things that are contained in this kingdom of God, that is Jesus. Jesus is the kingdom. Jesus is the kingdom of God. The word of God has become flesh. Jesus is the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 establishes that. The righteousness of God, which we know we are brought into through Jesus. Jesus is the container. And all these things are the content. All these things are the content of the container. You can say, oh, what if the container breaks? Jesus, the word of God that became flesh, can never break. He's eternal. He is of God. The Bible says he wasn't fashioned out according to, you know, the effort of man. It wasn't according to man's plan. God by himself, by his infinite wisdom, fashioned out the person of Jesus. He packaged him to come into human existence because he wanted to connect back to us. He wanted to get to our level. Jesus is an extraordinary person, so he's not ever going to break like any container made of humanity, made of human effort, no human wisdom, no. He's not even going to contain, it breaks so that they said the container broke and then the, the content spilled. No, Jesus is not ever going to break. He remains the eternal container through, through whom God has given us life. It says in him is that Christ himself is eternal life. There's a testimony that life is in him, eternal life is in him. So there is no other way. No one the, the, the Bible says in John, John chapter 4 verse 6, no 14 verse 6. John 14 verse 6 made it very explicit there. Jesus himself talking. He was saying something there just to confirm what the Bible says. Jesus said to, to, to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus was careful not to use an indefinite article. He could have said, I am a way, which would mean there are other ways to get to God. I am one of the ways. He did not say that. I am one of the truths. He didn't say that. I am some, I mean, somehow life. No, he said, I am the truth. He used the definite article there. T-H-E. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. <laughs> Praise God. No one comes to the Father. We're talking about going to God, getting to God. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. Just like the, that portion we quoted said, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. God has designed eternal life for humanity. But the, the only way to get that eternal life is through Jesus. Say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life that God is referring to, that is eternal. The life that will happen after in our physical life right now. That is the life he's talking about. Not the physical one we're living right now, but the life that ensures that in eternity you're not condemned. The life that separates you from eternal condemnation. That's what Jesus is referring to. He said, I am the way to that life. I am the truth. Every other thing that is said outside of me, it's just a mere story. I am the truth of life. I am the truth that takes you to that eternity. 
uh, to that eternal life. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, I am there. He didn't say, I am one of. He didn't say, I am a. No. He said, I am there. So get it, get it very clear that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Have we established that? Praise God. Then also, we also need to look at um, the fact that when we're talking about the container, outlasting the content, it really brings to mind you know, the idea of miracles, hands and wonders, which we all seem to be very much after these days, you know. You know, the, the message of salvation has been reduced to just what, what, what we can get physically right now. There's the little attention paid to eternity, which is the crux of the matter. There's just little attention paid to life after now. You know, all we want is the now, now, now. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that miracles don't happen or they're not good. Miracles are part of God reaching out to us, stepping into our difficult situation. They gladden the heart. They authenticate God's presence in the midst of his people. They edify us. They make us have the assurance that God cares and that he's in business with us. He's at work, that his power is able to do all things for us. Miracles, signs and wonders, they are part of the deal. But that's not the main deal. That's what I'm trying to say here. The main deal is Jesus. No wonder the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Matthew 6, 33, it's just made clear there. It said, seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Jesus is the kingdom. Jesus is, is the righteousness of God. And he said, and his righteousness. He didn't just say his righteousness. He said his, with a capital H, his righteousness. Jesus is the kingdom and his righteousness, his lifestyle. And all these things shall be added unto you. But people, we after these days, all these things after the content not the container that is a huge mistake that is very misleading I wish that at the end of this teaching that someone will understand the difference between the content and the container that when you want to separate the container just take the, con the content and leave the container alone you're making a, a huge mistake I'll tell us a story I read somewhere that um so there was this painter, a big time painter. He was very gifted. He painted all sorts of things, ideas, concepts, you know, filled his life and he was painting, painting, painting away expensive stuff. So when he was dying, he left a will. And after his death, so they were going to auction his, you know, his paintings, you no know, good works, the jobs he did over the years. They had a collection of them and they were auctioning it. So the the person, how, how are they called, whatever, the person that's in charge of the auctioning. So he started, he brought out a painting of the man's son. The man painted his son, you know, and brought, uh, was, that was the first thing the, auction, the auctioneer, you know, presented. Uh, every, everybody was like, what is this? What are we doing with this? Have, because more important painting is that the guy, he has piles and piles of work out there. You know, a, a great man, a great painter. So everybody was agitated. They were just, eh, please. We are not interested in this song. Is that not his son's picture? What are we doing with this? Please take it away. The man insisted. He kept presenting the picture of the son. You know, he refused to be bothered by all the noise out there. He just stood his ground that he needed to sell that one out first. That was the man's instruction. A lot of people looked the other way. They were ready with their bags of money. Everybody was just ready with their check and everything bouncing around. So he just kept presenting that picture of the son. So eventually, there's some, somebody somewhere, well, okay, let's get it done. So somebody stepped out. The man said, is that what you want to do? He said, well, the person said, okay, if that's just, well, let's get it done. You may not, I want, I want someone that really appreciates this man and that wants to buy this picture. Somebody came out from the crowd and said, honestly, for whatever reason that this picture is being presented, I, I become very interested in this picture. Let me get it. So he took the picture of the man's son, and behold, when he, uh, when, when he took the picture and there was an instruction to open the paper that wrapped it at the back, and when he opened it, the picture, uh, the, uh, uh, the, there was an inscription that says, whoever gets this son gets everything, everything of the man's belonging, everything that belongs to the man. So there was no more auctioning to do. That whoever that got the picture of that man's son 
was going to get everything that belonged to the man. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Who would dare accept the picture of the man's son? My dear friend, are you ready? Are you willing to accept the picture of the man's son? It may not have been a fantastic picture. Forget it that these days they paint a wonderful picture of Jesus, a very handsome man and everything. You go back to the Bible and hear what the Bible says about him, that they had no form, he had no, that anybody should be crazy about him. You paint a picture of Jesus who is loving, is always providing, but you don't paint a picture of Jesus, the suffering man, the man of sorrow. So it doesn't matter the, paint, the painting of the picture of Jesus that you have. Are you ready? Are you willing to accept this son? This son that meant so much to the father that the father said, tied everything that he owned to the picture of that son. That's exactly what God has done with us. Are we ready to accept the picture of the son, the picture of this saving grace, that the grace of God unto salvation Jesus has, God has finished painting this, the picture of his son. He said, if you accept this picture, that's it. You have everything that I, that I own. So when we spend a lot of time on the content and despise the content, you just want to get the content and walk away. Just, okay, Jesus, I just want this. I, want, I hear you can do this. I hear you can do this. You hear about just like those, the crowd that came to him. After ministering to them, you know, with the word, after teaching, he now fed them and everybody was happy. They all went home rejoicing. They told others, ah, the man, the teacher, when we went to him today, he fed us, he gave us some, you know, fish and bread, fresh bread. Oh, everybody ran back, back, back the next day. When he started teaching them the hard truth, they started going away one by one, one by one, one by one. They started going away because what they wanted was the miracle of the feeding. Is that where you are at this time? Are you ready to say, when they were all going, I saw Jesus looked up and said, Peter, are you still here? What are you still doing? Peter said, where are we going? We don't have any other place to go except you. Because you have the word and the word is life. You have the word. And he, he didn't just have the word. He is the word himself. And he is the, the truth and the life. Peter understood him as, hey, this is where I want to stay. I know that if I have you, I have everything. Is somebody's eye is open? Uh, is somebody's eye open to the truth today? Are you getting the gist that is in this sun, this container that you have everything? So would you just do yourself a favor and stop just looking for the content? Seek to get the the, the container. Say he that has the sun has eternal life. Are you going to just be okay at getting the content? And then the content, when he finished, he said, everything will go away. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. Matthew, uh, Matthew um, I think it's Matthew 6, uh, Matthew 7, 22, verse 24. Matthew 7, 20, uh, 22 to 24. It says, everything will disappear. Everything will disappear except the word. And that is why it is okay for you to take a break. Think about what you're after. Are you after the content? Or are you after the container? Are you after what the word has to offer you? Or are you after the word himself? The word being Jesus, being the righteousness of God. Or you're just after what the word can give you. Healing, blessing. Favor? Yes. Those are these things. But the word of God wants us to accept the word. Accept the word first. He says, in Matthew chapter 7 verse 22, he said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Verse 23 says, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Hmm. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. <sighs> who wants to build his house on the rock today? The rock, which is Jesus. He said, many will come and say, we did this, we did that in your name. That is what the name of Jesus can do. All that God has established in the name of Jesus cannot be altered. You can enjoy them, but if you don't have Jesus himself, nature respects the name of Jesus. Situations, conditions, they respect the name of Jesus. 
Let us go to the Bible and establish it. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, let's go, let's start reading from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. So let's see what happens about the name of Jesus so that we don't get it mixed up. Oh, yes, we have the name, we can do signs and wonders. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Then what happens? Therefore, God has so highly exalted Jesus. Verse 10. Therefore, God also has that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. That said, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Things will change. Things will surrender, will succumb. There will be a turnaround. Things will happen at the name of Jesus. But that Jesus, do you have a personal relationship with him? Or just what he has to offer outside of salvation? Jesus himself is the salvation plan of God. If you accept him, he said, accept him first. He is the kingdom of God. And all these things, all these things, the power to heal, the power to perform miracles, signs and wonders, the power to overcome, to prevail, the power to, to excel in whatever you're doing, they will come to you. That is the word of God. But oftentimes, humanity will generally confuse it. We think, oh, once we're able to perform signs and wonders, we are there. That's not true. That is very misleading. Pay more attention to receiving Christ, holding on to Christ. That's the most important thing you can do for yourself. And not the content. Those contents are just addition. The major thing God wants for humanity is to have the container. Say, he that has the Son has eternal life. He that does not have Jesus, the Son, does not have life. We're talking about eternity. We are saying that the, the, the Word of God is Jesus. Jesus the Word. He said He was made flesh. That is John chapter 1 verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, This Word was made flesh. So when we accept the Word of God, we are accepting Jesus. Not what the Word can do. Not what is contained in the Word. The primary thing that the Word came to do is to save us, set us free. He said, everything will pass away. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. He says, everything will pass away. All those signs and wonders, these miracles, they will all fade. They will all pass away. Those beauty, those glamour of life, the successes that come with it, with the open doors, they will all fizzle out. But that Jesus, he said, but not even one out of this world will pass. That is Jesus. Jesus remains eternally. So when those people will come and say, and we cast out devil in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did this. And he said, <laughs> he said, he said to them, I don't know who you are. Go away from me, you workers of iniquity, you lawlessness, you people, you people of lawlessness. You walk lawlessness. You walk lawlessly. You don't you don't obey the word of God, the Lord of the Lord. You don't obey your disobedience. I don't have any business with you. So the problem is not. The miracles or the signs and wonders we chased after they were performed. No, it is having Jesus, the container, not the content. We might all just go ahead and exhibit all the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues and perform all the wonders and all the signs. But if we don't have relation, if we don't manifest the fruit of the Spirit, if we don't have Christ as our Savior and Lord, Jesus comes to dwell in us to take over, to prevail in our lives, to, to be our Lord, to guide us, to lead us, then that's now when we, if we begin to manifest the, you know, the gift of the Spirit to make meaning. Because we have the container. Because we have the container that is always there. But the content may just drain, go off, you know, drain off, and that's it. The, the, the content, someday will just fizzle. That's what the Bible says. Then all these things will go away someday. But that the container stays forever. The content will some way disappear someday. Do you want to disappear with the, con with the content? Are you just okay receiving the content or you want to follow the container and hold on to the container? 
That is where eternal life is. Hold on to the content of my dear friend. Don't, don't stay with the content. Don't be satisfied with the content. Because it's a very dreadful idea. And you know, holding on, I'm performing wonders. This man is chasing miracles and signs and wonders around. This is very dreadful and has been the bane of humanity, mixing up the gifts and the manifestation of the power of God and the authority in the name of Jesus with eternity, with eternal life in him, salvation, opening our heart to salvation. They are not the same, please. Learn it that the content may deceive you. Whereas if you stay with the container, you will still have the content. Do not seek the content. Seek to hold on to the container. Let the container be your focus. Let Jesus be your focus. All these other things will be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to just learn one thing today. Learn one thing today. Don't let go the container. Stay with the container. It is the container that can release those contents to you. The content can deceive you. The, you'll be chasing after signs and wonders, miracles, and you lose sight of the container. The container is the most important thing. Stay with the container. May the Lord bless you as you consider staying with the container. Father, we bless your name for this moment. We ask, oh God, that you reach into our heart, capture our heart. Let us stay with the container because the container surely would have blast the content. Let's not be satisfied just having the content. The content will end someday, but the container stays eternally because the container is your word. The container is made by your own hand and in it is all that we need. Help us to reach out and stay with the container. Hold on to the container, not to let go, because the container is eternal and we never rust, we never break. Your word says heaven and earth will pass away, but these signs and wonders will end, prophecies they will end, but your word stays eternally. Help us to reach out for your word. Let this word be inscribed in our heart. Let us cling onto the word. Let us hold onto the container. Let us let us focus on the content and not just the content. Let's not be satisfied just receiving the content. For we know that if we hold on to the container, all these things shall be added unto us. And we will outlast them like the container outlasts the content. Father, this is our humble prayer today. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, this is Testimony Ministries. Remember, our passion is to reach out to those out there. If you can come by yourself, send in something. You can go out there, the homeless, the people that have not been reached, the people that feel cut off, we can take the word of God to them, whatever they are, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.